All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Honor. Welcome to another exciting video. Today we are talking about Strike Three Holdings going on a rampage, filing lawsuits for BitTorrent file sharing of their adult pornographic films, Tushy Black Vixen. And one litigation strategy that we're seeing, I wanted to point it out, is the filing of subpoenas, okay? Serving, filing, serving subpoenas, usually to the ISP like Cox, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon. We already know that. But something new we're seeing is you get into litigation. Now, Strike 3 needs to prove that, you know, they're to, in order to move forward in their law, lawsuit, there is a case called the Cobbler case, which says they have to show something more than just the fact that you're a subscriber. So they send an ISP uh, subpoena to your ISP. Your ISP says, yeah, uh, here's the subscriber. It's it's uh, Jane Doe. And they say, well, it's not Jane Doe. Jane Doe didn't do this. And so they try to get your name and find out who the real infringer is. So maybe, um, maybe the uh, subscription is in the name of a female. I, we have never had a female infringer. Not to say we couldn't or wouldn't, but just as a matter of fact, we haven't. They need to go around and dig up who they think it is, okay? They need to come back with some kind of credible evidence, some plausible evidence anyway, that the person they're alleging or they want to amend their complaint and put somebody's name on there, they have to satisfy the cobbler rule, which says you got to have something more. You kind of got to, you can't just say, well, they're the subscriber. You can need to show that maybe there's additional downloads related to what the person does for a living. For example, maybe you have a graphic designer and they say, well, we also saw that they were downloading, you know, Corel photos or photo, Photoshop or whatever, you know. So um, they try to make these connections. But this is an all new one that I haven't seen before in many years of handling strike three cases, hundreds of cases, is sending and serving subpoenas, third party subpoenas. And I'm just going to walk over here to the litigation whiteboard. Uh, to Netflix and Google. So, I mean, how many of you out there would want your Netflix uh, account records revealed or your Google account records revealed? And what would it reveal? Would it reveal certain things? Uh, but I'm going to give you a quick look at some of the things they're looking for so you can think about it. But I have up here cobbler number one make sure that you're looking to get additional evidence in these cases because there are cases where they will allege somebody is the infringer they'll maybe they'll get a female who's the subscriber and they'll say well it's not her it's somebody else and they'll try to find somebody at the household that was the was the downloader okay so but the burden is on them to come up with something at the cobbler level what we call the cobbler nevada case to show to the court that it's plausible and, and you know, perhaps likely that you are the downloader, um, you know, when they pick a person, you know, that through their uh, due diligence period. So um, when you get these subpoenas, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you get into a process with subpoenas, the, the, the subpoenas are a little bit different. You need to act quickly. You got to jump on them. If you don't, you're going to waive your rights. And um, it's just you got to get the timing. I'm not going to go over that. I think I've done that in another video. I'm not sure. But the timing, you got to you get subpoenas that don't make sense. You got to challenge them quick. Don't mess around. Um, and that is done via the MTQ, which is the motion to quash. That's correct. If you got that, you're on the board. You're on the game. All right. So let's take a look at their Netflix, what they're looking for. Here's some of the... Uh, Here's some of the documents they're looking for. Let me just read this to you and you tell me, would you want somebody getting this information on, on you? Um, all documents related to your basic registration. So when you when you sign up and you register, clickstream information, all documents related to clickstream. Let me read you what the definition of clickstream is. Clickstream information shall mean the details of actions a user has taken while navigating through the Netflix website while in a while in a logged in state. So they track want to track all that clickstream information. I mean, can you imagine like what you know, what are they looking for here? And it, it seems a little bit to be on the fishing expedition side of life. But um, let's take a look here. So all documents related to your device information. So they want to know all the devices you're using to access. Well, maybe they're going to say, well, you have a, you have this computer and that computer setting you up to basically try to make a request to forensically examine your hard drives. Um, all documents related to the IP address log. 
all documents related to the my list information all documents are related to the playback playback related events all documents related to ratings information for the defendant's netflix account and i believe they're referring to what the shows are like do you watch all r rated do you watch pg r little mixture those kinds of things um, all documents related to the search history information search history they want to know what you're searching for on netflix wow um, all documents related to the subscription history for defendant's Netflix account. All documents related to viewing activity. So that's quite uh, that's quite a uh, search out there for uh, documents to try to pin you down to try to meet the cobbler standard and also to try to prove their case. You know, they ultimately if it goes to trial, you need to prove your case. You know, with a preponderance of the evidence. So that is the uh, Netflix subpoena, um, which, as I mentioned in this particular case, uh, it was not uh, timely objected to, so the court denied the motion to quash. So make sure you're jumping on these subpoenas real quick. Don't mess around. Um, here's Google. Here's what they want from Google. Okay, so these third-party subpoenas. All documents identifying the basic registration information, you know, your name, address, email, all that. All documents regarding email addresses for defendant's Google account. So they want alternative email addresses, maybe look you up on the web, see what's going on there. All documents identifying all IP addresses used to access the Google accounts or their different IP addresses. Um, all connection activity logs. There's a big definition for that. I'm not going to go into it. All transactional information. So get this. For purchases made under defendant's Google account, they want transactional information for purchases made for service and products. And when I looked at the definition they provided for that, there was like every Google and every Google product that's out there, which is a ton of them. So they want all your transactional information. Why? Is that relevant? That's a good question. Um, all documents identifying the technical specifications for each device used to access these services, service and products is through Google. All documents identifying the file names for all files stored on the drive under defendant's Google account on Google Drive. Uh, all the file names, that's kind of an interesting one. All videos uploaded to YouTube using defendant's Google account. So I guess that assumes maybe somebody might have a YouTube channel. All documents containing all comments posted by defendants, Google account on YouTube videos and or channels. All documents related to internet searches uh, that contain the following terms. So they're looking for your search history, but um, to their credit, they are narrowing that because you don't want to get too crazy there. But for um, looking for strike three holdings, blacked, Tushy, Vixen, Torrent, and uTorrent, uTorrent. Um, one more page, couple more things they're looking for from Google, all documents identifying. Uh, nope, we already have this, we've covered that. So there you have it folks. So that's the kind of information when you're in a strike three settlement setting and you wanna say, well, do I wanna push forward? These are the kinds of things that you might see them going for. So you need to think about it in your case. Do I want somebody going there? Is it going to be a problem? Um, can we quash it? I mean, certainly, I think if this was a timely quash, a timely motion to quash, I think they probably could have limited some of this. I mean, I would have to believe some of this would be limited on relevancy. What's the relevance? Is it likely to lead to admissible evidence? So, uh, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. That's a strike three holdings update. They just filed another, I don't know, 100 cases. I think there are over 7,000 cases all time. And I believe on last count, there are over 2,000 filings this year. So they are really on a rampage, filing a lot of lawsuits. And this appears to be one of their tools in their litigation arsenal. So if you get a letter from your ISP, call us. We have handled hundreds of cases, uh, millions of dollars in settlements, and um, you know, particularly California, Arizona, West Coast, uh, we handle a bulk of the cases, okay? So Attorney Steve Vonderen, general legal information only, not legal advice. And um, again, if you need to find a torrent lawyer, file sharing, copyright infringement being alleged, attorneysteve.com, that's where you wanna go, attorneysteve.com. 
dot com, the first name in legal services. I got to run. Thanks for watching now. And again, be careful out there when you're downloading and save your friends some money. Tell them don't download strike three movies. Don't download strike three movies. It can cost you. And it's, you know, some of the things are kind of sad. Somebody's saving up for a home and then uh, these things come. Okay. So anyway, warning for the day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.